Thank you all very much indeed for coming to, uh, to listen to this lecture. And I'm going to talk about trapeziectomy, complications and dealing with failed cases. Now complications are fortunately very rare, perhaps 4% in total. But they could be divided into soft tissue complications and mechanical complications. And soft tissue complications, infections, CRPS, scar pain, neuroma, FCR tendonitis. There was a problem with Artalon where a foreign body was put in. That's been uh, withdrawn. But the complications that are more difficult to manage are the mechanical ones. When the metacarpal base is unstable or the metacarpal impinges on the scaphoid or if there's residual STT arthritis if there's a hyperextended MCP joint, if the metacarpal adducts and flexes. Now, soft tissue complications, you want to try and avoid them if possible. Uh, nerve damage should be avoided by very careful dissection, and probably there's less risk for the nerves through the Wagner approach at the front than through the dorsal approach. You should think about avoiding the unnecessary suspension procedures. There's evidence that there's no benefit for suspension arthroplasty with a tendon, and it's probably a higher complication rate. And if we get a soft tissue complication, well, usually it's time, therapy, maybe a steroid injection occasionally. Uh, most of these will settle down. This anatomical study looked at where the nerves are placed uh, and over the front of the snuff box. The, uh, you can see there's the Wagner approach, there's the radiostyloid approach, and both of these have nerves in the way, the superficial radial nerve from the dorsal approach and branches of the lateral cutaneous nerve of the forearm and the superficial radial nerve in the Wagner approach. This study suggested there were three times as many soft tissue complications through the posterior approach as there are through the anterior approach. So think about using an anterior approach. Now, how do you manage mechanical complications? What are they and how can we treat them? STT arthritis is sometimes overlooked in the first operation. It's really important during your first procedure that you pull on the index metacarpal uh, through the index finger and look into that space. And if there's arthritis there, you should just take away about three millimeters, not too much, about three millimeters. And I advise you use a fine saw for that uh, rather than an osteotome. An osteotome can cause the bone to fragment. Over time, you can get STT arthritis appear, and if so, a CT scan can show that. And again, if you're revising, you can go back and undercut the trapezoid with a saw. Another mechanical complication is if the scaphoid impinges down on uh, the metacarpal. And you can see an example in the top right. Now, if that's the case, uh, personally, I've had most success using the tightrope anchor, which will pull the metacarpal well away from the scaphoid. You can use a tendon weave, but I find that's usually quite lax and not strong enough, particularly when there's been such soft tissue contracture. And more recently, the internal brace from Arthrex, where you take a slip of tendon and that's anchored into the base of the first metacarpal and the second to try and suspend it out. Quite a difficult procedure. Other options? Uh, here, uh, from David Evans, was using the silastic implant is a digital implant. It's turned upside down. The, uh, it's cut a bit short and that's put into the space. Only for impingement of the two bones. This option was discussed um, using a piece of rib cartilage into the space. I've not done that, uh, but I guess it's an option. And more recently, another inventive approach uh, in the Journal of Hand Surgery just last year was to put an implant in and this time put the implant into the scaphoid and the metacarpal uh, to try and revise a failed trapeziectomy. And this paper suggested that for some patients uh, there were successful results uh, a few years down the line. But unfortunately they don't always work these procedures and if you have really painful impingement then a fusion. And there's two options. You can fuse the first metacarpal to the scaphoid. That's difficult, and if you do it, you'll need quite a large structural bone graft, uh, as that paper on the bottom left suggests. What I've used, and uh, I found it to be successful, is to use bone graft between the base of the first and the base of the second, and then hold that with two fine screws or two fine wires, preferably screws, 
and that will restore length and restore stability, albeit at the expense of an opposable thumb base. Now, another problem is the metacarpal base is unstable. So the metacarpal base is wobbling around. And to treat that surgically, well, you have to pull the base of the first to the base of the second. And in a way, it's the same as you would use for the impinging base. You can use a tendon. Uh, that is quite difficult to get the tightness. A tightrope or an internal brace. And again, if it fails, well, you might have to consider a fusion. The fusion is not a good operation. That loss of opposition is troublesome. Another problem is the zigzag collapse, where you have the metacarpal base is flexed and adducted, as you can see there, and you have secondary MP joint hyperextension. This is really difficult to rebalance. And do beware patients who have this zigzag deformity before surgery. And uh, you should probably consider a CMC joint fusion rather than a trapeziectomy. Uh, you'll probably find otherwise that this zigzag collapse recurs and after trapeziectomy it's really difficult, really difficult to rebalance. There are options. You can leave it alone if they cope, as some do. The APL tenodesis is worth trying. There's one I've done on the right where you take APL and you find one of the slips beneath the, just beneath the uh, brachial radialis and you insert that down into the radius using a bone anchor. Hold it with a wire for a few weeks and you can see how that pulls out the metacarpal base and at the same time corrects the MP flexion. Other options, you could try a tightrope. Uh, I find that doesn't really collect that adducted posture. And again, if all fails, the dreadful operation, a fusion onto the scaphoid or the first to the second metacarpal. So to summarise, complications are rare after trapeziectomy. It's a good operation. Some are avoidable. Careful surgery, um, careful thought about what you're going to do, particularly if they have a zigzag collapse. Think of the mechanics. And if you have to manage mechanical complications, it isn't easy, it's difficult, and it can be unpredictable. But sometimes you have to at least try. So, well, thank you all for listening. I hope that was helpful. And any questions, of course, I'll be very pleased to answer them. Mm -hmm.